Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch. Today we are checking out CryEngine 5.6, which was just released earlier today by Crytek. Now, CryEngine has had a storied history. From when it debuted with Crisis, it was probably the prettiest game engine we'd ever seen. And still, to this day, Crisis looks amazing on a modern PC. And since then, they kind of ran into some hard times. They licensed out a copy to Lumberyard, and they basically almost started over from scratch. So CryEngine 5.x is just a massively different experience. And 5.6 is kind of a refinement of that experience. If you used CryEngine once in the past, trust me, if it hasn't been for quite a while, this is a completely new engine. So what is in the 5.6 release? Is it interesting enough for you to come in and pay the 5% royalty they ask for? Well, let's take a look. First off, you can grab it in the CryEngine launcher. There's some significance to the launcher in that it became slightly less significant because of this release. But if you want to grab it, if you already have the launcher, you just go in here, library, go to my engines. And if you don't already have 5.6, Six installed, it will prompt you. Just download it. It's about two gigs in size. It's pretty straightforward to get. Otherwise, just head over to cryengine.com, download the launcher, and go through this step. Once you've got it, you can create a project right here. Now, the interesting thing with CryEngine now, though, and this is something that is long overdue, here I am in the CryEngine sandbox. You can think of this as the primary IDE for CryEngine development. Well, one of the things that came with 5.6's release is now you can actually come in here, go new, and you can create projects directly from within the sandbox. No more having to go out to the launcher to create a new project. It definitely streamlines things. It's a very nice workflow on the whole. Now, on top of what you're seeing, what I'm going to quickly showcase here, so this new project manager, and I'm going to show you one of the other new tools that just showed up in here. You can just see there's refinements across the board. There's a thousand small or, or, or intermediate sized improvements or changes in this particular release. We're going to jump into the release notes in just a few minutes. They also released a video, which I will link in the linked article down below, showcasing some of the new graphical effects in action. So I'm not going to touch that. I will just link that video to you as well. So you see here, you can now create the projects directly within CryEngine. Uh, CryEngine itself, if you haven't looked at it in a while, you'll notice it is a much different looking game engine and is much easier to get started with. The tools are a lot better. It's been streamlined. Your tools up here are a lot more refined. They move to a full anti-component system with the way that it works. Uh, you can now program in um, C++ or C Sharp. They've also got um, some other scripting options that it's called schematic, but I don't know what's going on with that, to be honest. Uh, the other new thing that they've added in this release, and I'll just go ahead and create a new entity to showcase this. So let's create a new, okay. This is never intuitive to me. All right, I want an empty entity and I want it in the scene. Okay, Did I, yeah, there we go. So I am creating them. I'm creating particle effects. All right, that'll do it anyways. So here we got my entity in the scene. And you'll notice over here, again, I told you it was component based. You've now got the option of going AI and we can add in behavior trees. And there isn't one yet, so we'd have to hook one up and create one for it. But this is something new that was developed for Hunt Showdown, a game that Crytek released earlier this year, and that was used in dogfooding a lot of the new features or driving the new features that have appeared in 5.6. And this is one of those things I actually kind of like. More and more uh, game engines, so uh, Unreal Engine and now Crytek, are pushing their own engines forward in development based off of having, um, you know, their own game development. So those are kind of feeding the features and tools you're seeing. Anyways, back to what we were looking at here. So now we've got the new behavior tree editor. The user interface isn't immediately obvious. You can dock it anywhere in your scene if you wish, but I'll keep it floating like so. Come on over here. You can go ahead and you can create a new one. It's an XML file. Just create it wherever it wants. So behave tree. And I actually have absolutely no idea how to use this, but it allows you to hook up behavior trees that kind of tie things together, create various different state machines and, and bring systems together. So you can see various different events here. You can pick your tree root node, and then we can go node must be specified. Come in here and we'll call this condition, a condition gate. You can create a condition for it. And then we can do things like, uh, like, as I mentioned earlier on state machine, uh, there is actually a state machine option here with a typo, a state machine. So you can create a state machine in here. Uh, we insert various different states into it and you can build these flow graph behavior trees all in this particular tool kind of, um, puts more power in your editor and kind of makes it easier for your program. Again, I barely know how to use the tool. So that's the extent of what I'm going to showcase. And frankly, that's actually all we're going to see of the, uh, CryEngine sandbox editor in action. But as you can see, if you have not checked it out in quite a while, the user interface 
interface has come a long way. It's much more streamlined. And again, I do love this change that you can now create projects directly in here. Kind of keeps you out of having to go to the launcher in general. Uh, so let's head on over. There are two sets of release notes. We got this first one here on the um, CryEngine blog. Of course, I will link all of this, so don't worry about it. Uh, we're not going to look at this with the too much detail. I'm just going to point out this line here. This major release packs in over a thousand changes. It includes production proven features, which have been used to deliver Hunt Showdown. Again, the game that they released recently right here, which is actually quite beautiful. Um, the entire team at Crytek would like to thank the entire Crunch community for all the feedback, suggestions, and so on. 5.6 is designed to put more power in your hand and make game creation quicker and easier. We're sure you will all agree that it's a mar it marks a big step forward for the engine. Uh, as you know, work doesn't stop, and we're working on... Uh, um, we're already looking at the roadmap for CryEngine 5.7. That's one of those things, actually, I've got to point out before I get too much further in. Uh, 5.7 or 5.8 is where the real-time ray tracing stuff is coming in. It's not here yet. So uh, that was one of those things they showed off at GDC, but it's actually quite a ways down the road before we're going to see that. So here we are in the full release notes. I'm not going to get into the complete details, so but I'm going to show you the highlight new features here. So the first one I already, I already showcased to you, the new in-editor project management, so you can load and create new projects directly from within the sandbox editor without having to drop out to the launcher, which I definitely like. Uh, we've got new uh, micro facet multi-layer materials. It basically allows you to create uh advanced metals by layering materials at the top. So by describing materials as a stack of layers of varying thickness, each with different optical properties, users can, for instance, create a wet surface by defining a slightly absorptive layer on top and spatially or temporally varying the thickness of that layer. So you can see you can stack these layers on top of each other and create really cool metal effects. Area lightings deliver better performance on how light behaves in traditional punctual sources. New implementation makes use of pre-computed textures, which will calculate and model area lights for more accuracy. It also allows for more flexibility when dealing with different kinds of light shapes. As of now, area lights are part of the light um, point light component. So if you have point lights in your scene, you can now easily change them to uh, area lights. And again, once again, this is one of the really cool things that we've got here is all this stuff is component based. So you see here, we've got point light right there and you can convert it into an area light now. That's the, one of the new options. So anyways, everything is component based. It does make it much cleaner. And if you're not used to uh, engine, CryEngine 5.x or later, that's probably new to you. Another thing that they've added is tessellated particle ribbons. So basically they've taken render ribbons and added tessellation options. Uh, can stage to smooth the joints in ribbon particles by generating new polygons in a curved shape, which is also adaptive to distance. So you can do things like smoke trails or contours, uh, worms and vines. Uh, um, inter entity constraint point storage. This feature is designed to create gears, but also other functions. It allows users to manually specify which entity will own the constraint point. And since each constrained entity can have its own constraint points in place, it is possible to create objects like belts with this feature. So if you want to create, for example, um, the tracks for a tank, you can use the, these dependencies and constraints to do so. Uh, pressurized closed buoyant cloth. Basically, you can give pressure to cloth shapes. So you could do things like create uh, a whoopee cushion or a um, life jacket. Kind of thing. Uh, custom mesh ropes. Uh, ropes can now use bones and skinning and can be built from custom uh, CGF. Now, CGF is basically just an imported mesh in CryEngine format. Uh, from meshes re repeated several times. This enables chain rope to be created from a single link and allows for rapid creation of vines or complex cables that fit in your environment. So for example, you could create a single chain link, import it as a CGF mesh, and then create a chain as a result and have bones hooked up to control that. So you could have dangling chains, make Hellraiser in your own game if you really so wished. Uh, full body Ragdoll IK. Ragdoll IK is a physics aware, fully energy based, oh sorry, energy based full body IK, which tries to satisfy constraints composed on physical skeletons with minimal energy effort uh, energy wise this one's actually kind of nice cryware edx2 implementation before cry um, cry engine was dependent on uh, fmod i believe was the only audio option now there is another middleware uh, here for uh, audio uh, cryware edx2 a comprehensive easy to use audio system if your team already familiar with edx2 the transition is simple you can learn more there uh, the behavioral tree ui we saw this in action very poorly demonstrated but the new behavioral tree ui is a gui interface which enables users to quickly create complex behavior trees for artificial intelligence bringing NPCs and enemies to life. This tool was developed by the Hunt Showdown team, bringing yet more production-proven technology to the engine. And then finally, we have real-time ACE editing feedback. You can now preview, pre, uh, preview middleware events in the right panel of the audio control editor without need to connect them first, basically giving you faster feedback. And as I mentioned earlier on, there's something like a thousand changes and improvements and fixes in this particular release. And I am not even going to start reading them, but as you can see, there's a lot of them. 
and I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it just kind of keeps going and going and going. So if you're interested, again, I will link both the uh, CryEngine blog post, the client, the CryEngine release notes, as well as their video. It's about three minutes long, actually showcasing a lot of the new graphical effects in action. So you can see those chains and ragdoll physics and so on being used. So you get a better visualization of what those are all about. But that, yeah, that's CryEngine 5.6. And I you know what? It's definitely coming along. I would put it this way. Of all of the CryEngine releases, this one is the one I would be most interested in using. They are going in the right direction. There are some tweaks I find annoying when working in the editor, like when you saw me trying to create instance items. It just works differently than what you expect. Once you get used to it, it's fine. Uh, but their uh, project creation, project management, and the, the programming style, the ECS, the, the user interface, all of this stuff, it's as user-friendly as it has ever been. And they're starting to get rid of some of the legacy cruft, so it is getting to be a much better engine to use. Is it worth a flat 5% royalty? That's up to you guys to decide, but we are really spoiled for choice right now. So I mean, there are so many great game engines out there. And CryEngine, with each release, does seem to be getting better and better. So let me know what you think of this particular release. Is there a feature there that stands out for you? What do you think of CryEngine in general? Are you interested in checking it out? Are you, do you like the way they are going with it? Or are you firmly in the Team Unity, Team Godot, Team Unreal camp already? And this is just an amusing side project. Anyways, let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.